Okay, so I'm going to introduce Nelson. How, how, how do I describe Nelson? Let's see here. So he's a junior, if anybody wants to know that. He loves SpaceX, and if you want to have an hour of conversation with him, talk to him about Elon Musk and Tesla. <laughs> what does it mean to be and a junior? And SpaceX. <laughs> and if you have a Tesla, he love, hate you. <laughs> Real relationship. But he has actually been doing, let's see. To describe Nelson for designing on the web, he has actually been designing since the days of the battle of IE and Netscape. Who remembers Netscape? Okay, so we don't have a young crowd here. That's good, that's good. Talk to the older people if you want to know about Netscape. It's, <laughs> it's Firefox it? now. It's Firefox. I'll, I'll, it's Firefox now. But Nelson actually, he works as an evangelist slash community slash customer support at Webflow. He's been there for four years. Three. Three years, going on four. He's a lifetimer too. So tonight he's gonna to present to us about should designers code, and he's gonna talk a little bit about stuff. Actually, I'm not gonna say what you're gonna talk about. <laughs> so let's, let's invite Nelson up and he'll present. Hi everyone. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, awesome, awesome. Okay, so this question right here. Should designers go? So, designers, they're now expected to solve problems in the physical space. But more and more, designers are expected to, to design and solve problems for the digital space. So, the question that keeps coming up is now, should designers code? And the answer to that is simply, no. So thank you very much to Chris for letting me be here. All right, just kidding, just kidding. The actual answer is yes. Code the front end, code the back end, make the databases, make everything dynamic. Okay, that's not really the answer either. The code is code just a little. Now, before I go on, I'll introduce myself a little bit more. Again, my name is Nelson Avalos Jr. That's where the junior comes from. And I'm a customer success specialist over at Webflow. Uh, I've been web designing since before GeoCities was bought out by Yahoo. <laughs> and uh, I've been so interested, so fascinated by this industry ever since. I'm a big fan of Lego bricks. I love tech and gadgets and whatnot. And I love space exploration. Now a little bit about space exploration. The reason why I'm so fascinated and love it is because out there in space there are questions questions that want to be answered. And it's so nice to see a group of people. It's the humanity's brightest minds. It doesn't matter what your background is, your beliefs, your hobbies, your age group. Just all these people coming together to solve that one problem. And once they're done, they solve another problem. And kind of like web design, to make a great website or web app, you need great graph designers web designers, web developers, content strategists, business people, and yeah, to make those great web apps and web design, or web websites. And so seeing all that with a group of people working together, to me, that's really beautiful. Now, a little bit of my story about uh, web design. I started web design, again, in the GOCD space, and I had to learn code first. But when I saw a better websites, I would be like, how'd you do that? I want to learn that. And so I would install Photoshop and just make a static mock and then code it up and launch it. And I'm, at the end, I'm like, something doesn't feel right. This, this sucks. Do I, what's going on? And it would never feel right. And I never understood why. But then I met my wife and she taught me what I was missing, which was the fundamentals of graphic design. And after meeting, after meeting her and learning some of the graphic design stuff, I start to understand, you know, more and more like, oh, okay, that's why I couldn't make some good websites. Makes sense. And I work with her. Uh, she's a print and graphic designer. She's a co-founder and creative director for her boutique agency called The Calico Peel. And she works with a business partner right there in Virginia. And when she was learning uh, web design in school, they would tell her, install Photoshop. Okay, good. 
Now copy this code from the textbook, put it into Dreamweaver, and edit it. You're done. She didn't understand what the code meant. She was like, what does this code mean? Like, can you tell me the concepts? No, just copy it from the textbook, and then there you go, and you're done. And so that type of teaching made her really scared of code. And for a graph designer who's trying to get into websites, it's scary. But after we worked together, me being a web developer and her being a graph designer, we've worked on some awesome things, like Sherpa Energy Squares. Her and her business partner would work on the brand strategy, the brand design, the packaging, and the static mocks of the website. And then I would put it together. <coughs> and making websites like these are really fun when you have assets like these. So we did custom uh, photography. Um, I did the, the animations. And for some reason, my wife wanted me to model, so that's my modeling shot. <laughs> Very nice. Hired. Yep. <laughs> Another one we did together was Misadventure. Again, they did the brand strategy. I, uh, and I put it all together in the website. And as a developer, it's really, really fun. And lastly, I challenged her on one project and said, try something different. Go bigger. You know, like let's see how far we can push the web, make it more unique. And so she did. And for um, this one project for uh, University of San Diego, she designed this and I helped her build it. After that experience of working with her, I learned what it takes to be a good craft designer. Now for me in the past, you can't just install Photoshop and think, okay, I'm a good graphic designer, I can just do whatever I want, right? There's no reason, I'm just gonna see if I can do something. No, that's not how it works. What I was missing was the fundamentals of typography, layout, lighting, uh, imagery, color theory, concepts. I didn't learn any of those. And that's what was missing from my skill set. For her, for her, what she learned and what I taught her is that she can bring her graphic design skills over to the web with things like typography. You can use Google Web Fonts or Adobe Typekit, upload your own custom fonts, or even outline, in, uh, outline it as a SVG. For images, there's things called responsive images. And for layout, you can do CSS Flexbox and CSS Grid. But there was still this huge hurdle for my wife to get into web design. Now, when it comes to web design and learning it for the first time, how many people can relate to this slide? Anyone? Yeah? Nodding heads? Yeah. Totally understand. Because when you're starting to learn web design, you need to learn HTML5, CSS3, and maybe some vanilla JavaScript. But after that, Maybe learn WordPress, a preprocessor for your CSS, maybe a, fat, a framework like Foundation or Bootstrap, and jQuery. And then you want to make it dynamic, so hey, let's learn React or Angular or something crazy like that. And oh, don't forget, everything needs to work on a server. So learn the server technology <laughs> to keep your site live. Okay? Um, so when my wife wanted to create her portfolio, she was already overwhelmed. Like, I, I don't think I can do this. And, oh, don't forget, it has to work on every side screen possible. <laughs> now, let's compare web design to other creative industries. Let's talk about 3D animation. In 3D animation, you can get a tool like Maya. You can drag a limb or you can put some values in the tool and things happen in real time, your subject moves. For 3D modeling, you can spin your subject around, move the lighting around, change the shape. Again, it happens in real time. Digital artist, same thing. Illustrator, uh, game level designers, photographers with their histograms, and 
video editors. When you want to move a clip, you just move it somewhere and press spacebar and it happens. It renders immediately. Same thing with audio clips. And lastly, visual effects artists. You want to put something on the canvas, it shows up immediately. Once you press spacebar, your changes show up and rendered. Now what about web design? What do we got for web design? We have this. <laughs> Still. So you want to create a web page. Type up your HTML. Type up your CSS. Open up a web browser. Load up your web page. Does it look good? You need to make some edits? Yeah? Fix your HTML. Fix your CSS. Save it. Reload your web page. Want to add something else? Add more HTML and on and on and on. This is not real time. This is not visual. And frankly, it's not fun. So when do you get to the part of design in web design? So how about this? When graphic designers design the static mocks of their websites, how many of you just hand it off to a developer? For them to code, yeah? OK. And so you hand it off, and then you're expecting to see the great results that you put so much thought into, so much care into the UX or the layout or the concept of the website. And then when you get it back, it doesn't really look the same. And so as designers, we're kind of forced to take shortcuts in our design or design in the box because someone else already did it, so it worked for them, we're going to design just like that. Or we're going to use a template and not modify any of the stuff. And that's when the web becomes stale. And so when everyone is using the same design, the web becomes stale and no one's unique. No brand has the ability to stand out. And don't forget, after the launch, your client needs to maintain their site. You need to give the keys to your client. And when that happens, when that happens, the you have to get onto a training call with your client. And when you get on a training call with your client, uh, my wife had a training call and I overheard it. It was with a WordPress developer and her client. And it took an hour. <laughs> and I felt so bad for the client because the WordPress developer was using key terms like module, component, plugin. These aren't things <laughs> that a business person needs to fill their head with. It shouldn't be a chore for them to maintain a site. And so when I, when I see that, I hear that, I'm like, man, that business person should be focusing on their business, not on their website. The website should be doing its own thing, right? And so we're going to go back to July 2013. I went to a web design conference, and I was learning about new web design tools. And it was here at this uh, web design conference, I learned about a tool called Webflow. I signed up for the closed beta. And when I got home, I got an email said that I was chosen to help test it. And I was like, okay, cool, no big deal. But after playing with it for an hour, I, my mind blew because I was like, everything's happening in real time. I'm, I'm designing a website without coding. How, this, this is the future of web design. I gotta tell the world. So I went on Reddit and I posted, you guys gotta try this out, sign up for right now. And of course Reddit. They said, whatever, downvote. And then I went to a couple of meetups and I said, I need to talk about it. You guys, hey, this may help you. And so I kept talking about it. And then in October, I started a YouTube channel about it because I still wanted to tell more people. And then I found their community forums and helped people use Webflow. I was answering their questions and I was doing this all on my own time because I felt like this could help a lot of people. Two and a half years of my own time doing that, the CEO of Webflow emailed me and asked me to join the team. So what I'm doing right now is exactly what I've always wanted to do. Thank you. <laughs> so what is Webflow? Webflow is a professional design tool. Professional web design tool that helps you build websites in real time and without code. But you're still visually coding. When you drag in an element onto the canvas, you're actually writing HTML. When you're styling that element, you're actually writing CSS. 
And for me as a developer, it makes my workflow so much faster. For my wife, who's a graphic designer, she can see changes made in real time. And for the clients, they can edit their site without going into a separate UI. They can edit their site right on their site. So what they see is really what they get. If you want to change some text, add some content, add, add an image, or even a blog post, it looks exactly like your site. And when you press publish, those changes are live. No FTP, it goes straight to the server, and you're done. So in Webflow, what can you create? One I like to show off is our webflow.com homepage. This site was built by two graph designers, our brand designers, Ryan and JP. And they're mainly graph designers, but they learn a little bit of code through Webflow. And again, this was not done by a developer, only by two people. And Reform, the agency here, helped with the story here. So. Another thing you can do with Webflow is build dynamic sites. So you can build databases if you have like a large knowledge base or a, uh, a huge blog, news article site or whatever. You can build the database visually inside of Webflow and design it and publish it. And all it takes is one person to do all of this. So here's another example. And lastly, e-commerce sites. So if you have a third-party platform like Shopify, uh, Equid, or Gumroad, or something like that, and they give you a snippet of code, you can pull that into Webflow and make your site e-commerce. And we're also coming out with our own native feature of um, e-commerce really soon. So currently, it's a uh, plug-in on a separate platform. You eventually might have your own platform with all inclusive. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yeah. Are you able to go in and modify the actual code? Uh, I will, I I'll answer these. Uh, you can if you export, but I'll take your questions after this. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so lastly, uh, when my wife started to learn Webflow, I was teaching her two years ago how to use Webflow. Um, she was still scared of Webflow. But I told her that if you just learn the fundamentals, just like graph design, where you need to know the fundamentals of that medium to produce for that medium, web design is the same thing. You need to learn the fundamentals of HTML5 and CSS3 in order to produce for the web. But it still kind of scared her, and I told her, you don't need to know every single HTML tag. You don't need to know every single CSS property. As long as you know some of the basics, you'll be good to go. And after this whole experience of working with her to learn uh, teach her Webflow, I've learned that graph designers are the best web designers because you can bring your skills from graph design over to the web now and you can execute that on Webflow. Now, for my wife, she started as a graphic designer, but now she's become her own web designer. She's doing the static mock, she's doing the wireframes, the static mocks, building it in Webflow, building the database in Webflow, and so now she's become her own web developer and launching the CMS. And more and more, she's been relying less on me for her client work, which makes me super proud of her progress, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> so I started this talk with, should designers code? But with my experience, I think the, talk, uh, the question should be changed to, should designers have the access, have access to the power of code? And to that, I say, absolutely. Because with this power, we can all help make the web beautiful together. Thank you.
Okay, so we're going to open up for questions. Yes. Question. And, uh, we'll spend time on that, and then we'll jump into the workshop. Yeah. So, so what's your name? Jeff. Jeff. Great question, Jeff. So the question was, can you manipulate the code? Yeah. And you can if you export it out of Webflow. However, you cannot import any sites or any code back into Webflow. You can embed code, little code snippets, but you can't take a full site and put it back into Webflow. Yeah, it exports your static HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and inline images. Yep. And so you can host it elsewhere. Yes. So are you then paying, are you paying for hosting in a platform within Webflow, or are you paying for the tool you can act, where you can export things and host somewhere for both? So there's two things. There's account plans, and then there's hosting. So for account plans, you can use the tool however you want. Okay, and then you can export it and host somewhere else. Or if you want to use our hosting, that means that you can also use our CMS and um, our hosting, which is your backed up on Amazon Web Servers and you're on a Fastly.com CDN, but and, and a free SSL certificate, and you don't need to set up anything except for pressing publish. This is a web-based application. It is a web-based application. Mm -hmm. So I think when I I've floated around, talked to a bunch of you. Um, and a lot of them were talking about the export. Um, it makes me nervous, and I, I I'm biased against the export because I like the integrated suite. So yay, I'm I'm all in. Yeah, but but at the same time, is there the coding conventions are pretty straightforward enough that you could build into a workflow that had a dynamic backend, right? Yes. And so is is have you seen code libraries that are working as a I don't know. There, there's a workflow there that yes. would obviously had to be, you know. So, like, it, what's your exposure to an enterprise-based workflow with exported Webflow code that was version controlled and you know was able to be deployed in a fairly you know time efficient manner? So, <laughs> one of our biggest clients is Dell, and they use it for their e-commerce site. And how they do it is they create their style guides. Like, it, like, they make their framework style guide type of deal, and they export all of that static code, and all the code is production ready. So it's cross-browser and cross-device compatible immediately. So you export it, and it's like a shell. You give that shell to the developers, and they can focus not on making sure that they're doing it right to the style guide, but focusing on adding in that, that JavaScript or whatever that they need to connect to their own environment. And so you're just creating the shell as a designer, and you're helping the developers out by creating that HTML and CSS, and so they'll be good to go. So yeah. have you seen have you seen specific libraries for specific dynamic frameworks that kind of help with that? So, like, you know, like putting in dynamic your own dynamic content mm -hmm. from a, a content management system. Mm -hmm. um, there's got to be some like find replace you know insertions and all that different stuff. Yeah, so again, the code is so clean that a developer can just take it and, and go with it. If there's a uh, need to do like a find replace, so is the question more about like is the code bloated or like there's things you need to? I'm, I'm asking if there's like if, I haven't if there's seen. a community of libraries that are helping with that transition into like a Django framework or a Rails framework or a, you know what I mean? Like is yeah. there workflows that you've seen? As a community manager, that have established some parameters around this export, I have me personally, I have not. Okay, yeah, I, I mean it's fast. It, like from an enterprise perspective, that's kind of what we, we need to get to. Yeah, right? if yeah. we're going to deploy Webflow in a yeah high end environment. So obviously Dell has something. Yeah, in, yeah, their design team uses it. Okay, yeah. Well, good question. question. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. Good question. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? So the option to do something for, say I'm going to put a bunch of products online that's going to have a set template and form, and pictures are going to be in a certain spot, like recreate or something like that. So, I mean, as a design, you have the ability to create those templates and drag and drop things into it, or am I going to have to recreate for, the same sizes of boxes each time, just know what size it's going to be? Uh, so making a dynamic page based on, and taking the dynamic content from the database and and designing with it? Is that the question? Uh, like that. Essentially, yeah, I'm going to have a media library 
of assets and be able to put it into something and make it not only responsive for web and mobile, yeah. but to be something that is going to have the same template. It's like a form template yeah. to, to enter data. Yeah. So I may actually answer your question during the workshop because that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to quickly make a very basic blog page with the database and make it responsive and do that all under an hour. Yeah, so, so looking at the roadmap of Webflow, um, I know that e-commerce is kind of the big, the big next yeah. hurdle. Where do you see Webflow in the next three years? Are you, do you see it, like, I see a potential road, fork in the road by way, you could go down and say that you're going to get more into app-like behavior with more dynamic elements and interactions, building that up, or, you know, would you go... I mean, would it ever get to the point where it becomes more along the lines of like Ionic, where you're looking towards multi-platform, mobile deployment, wow. stuff like that? I don't know. Do like that question has been answered uh, by Vlad, and yeah, where do I see me personally see Webflow in three years? Um, I see it more around the world, and I hope that um, <laughs> I hope that the community grows even more. Uh, me personally, um, but I know that we're working on a user component marketplace where if there's something that Webflow can't do, you know, you if you're a developer, you can build something and put it into our marketplace and um, so yeah, a plugin architecture. Yeah, and is that going to have access to database function like? So basic, basic like, okay, so you, we already have database in the C CMS, right? Yes. But I'm talking about like a user login scenario. We're already working on user login. Okay, so, yeah. and that, because that will work hand in hand with e-commerce, uh -huh. where it's like uh, e-commerce, um, the first launch won't have user login, so people can't make their own accounts. But later down the road, people can make their own accounts and have their own dashboards and whatnot. So. And so then there's going to be the plug-in architecture of a third party that can go so slowly. Yeah. So what if that's the third party basis, uh, trying to think ahead of it from a business perspective, yeah. um, what is the code base that that's going to be required? What's what's the native? Um, is it going to be third party hosted or is it like, that obviously it would be third party hosted, but like what would it be like? That Those questions, I wouldn't know. Okay, but, sorry. But at the end of every quarter, our CEO talks uh, to the community and takes your questions for an hour and a half. So we do a live stream at the end, end of every quarter. So subscribe okay. to youtube.com slash webflow. And at the end of this year, you'll be able to ask him all the questions. Because um, that kind of stuff, I'm like... <laughs> I want to know too. Okay. <laughs> um, so on the, I don't know if you can say it yet, but on the e-commerce platform rollout, um, will there be like the option of like hotel booking where you get a calendar and make sure that there's room? Yeah, that would be nice. I, yeah that's, I mean, that's always the thing. It's like, oh, let's get Shopify. Well, that doesn't help the hospitality industry. Yeah. And I've got a client who yeah. has that. I mean, so you have to find this specif specific one, but yeah. you know you need that calendar function of yeah. is the room available at this time when I want to have my vacation? Yeah. Well, hopefully it can be answered either by our internal team or the community who makes a, a component. Okay. So is there like on the website? Can I post this question or yeah. say this is we a have feature a wish I'd list at wishlist.webflow.com and post it there. Uh, also, forum.webflow.com is our community, and our staff is always looking at it. Okay. And and yeah, we, we love these suggestions because there's so much on the web to tackle. Yeah. Right. So and I think we did that, we're we doing the best we can to at least cool. help as many people as possible. That'd be a step up above yeah. Shopify because they won't. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd be nice. The one thing about Webflow e-commerce that gets me excited is that you can customize the add to cart experience and the checkout page experience, and you don't need to code. Like it's always on the right and it's stuck there on the right, the add to cart. But yet if you want it in the center or place it anywhere or want to give it some weird animation, make it spin or something like Batman, you know, I mean, you'll be able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so should we kick off the uh, 
Oh. One more thing. Oh. Okay. This just okay. dropped. Let's yes. Stop. This just dropped yesterday. Just going to build a very basic blog page with uh, are we gonna do some of the uh, you can't use grid inside of the CMS yet. Oh no, yeah. soon. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna build a basic blog page. We're gonna have like thumbnails for the blog, and you click into it, and then you get to see a blog article. We're gonna make that all responsive, publish it live to the web, and yeah, all under an hour. Cool. Yeah, everybody cool. ready? No, I mean, I'm just watching. Yeah, you that's fine. Cool stay, stay stick around. Stick around. Now we got it? everyone have. Yeah, we're going to put it after the Aaron? Uh, yeah, let me write it on the board actually. You oh, getting too progressive, right? Yep. <laughs> and everything is lowercase except yeah. progressive.